Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video we're going to discuss whether or not a single speed light is good enough for flambient real estate photography. So I get asked the question fairly often whether or not a speed light is good enough for flambient real estate photography. It's an inexpensive option and maybe you're just getting started and that's all you can afford right now or maybe you have one already as opposed to something like the AD200 Pro, which is my go-to light for real estate photography. It's a much more powerful light. By the way, this is a V862 flash by Godox. It's a great option. It's a little more expensive than some of the other you know, speed lights out there because it has like a rechargeable battery and everything, which is great, it has great battery life. So this is a great option, but there are cheaper ones out there. So cutting to the chase, yes, a speed light will suffice for a lot of situations for flambeant real estate photography. You will find that it has limitations though, especially in larger rooms or rooms with say vaulted ceilings and things like that, then it's gonna be an issue. But in this video, I'm gonna show you the power difference between these two. And we're also gonna shoot a couple rooms just using the speed light so you can see what it's capable of. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into it. And first, I'm just gonna show you the power difference between these two lights. All right, so now I'm recording through the monitor of my camera so you can see exactly what I'm shooting. So what I'm gonna do here is shoot a photo with the speed light at full power, and then another photo with the AD200 at full power. So you can see the power difference between these two and see what this looks like at full power and this looks like at full power. All right, so this is the exposure that I'd have for my ambient shot, so I'm just gonna drop it down two stops now. And a little bit more, so somewhere around there. Just trying to cut down the ambient light as much as possible. So that's about where I would be for my flash shot. So now I'm gonna turn my flash trigger on. All right, my flash trigger is on. Now I'm just gonna turn the power up to full power, one to one. And I'm gonna use the speed light for this shot. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is just stand in the middle of the room and shoot this off at full power. All right, so there you can see the shot here with full power on the speed light. You know, it did a pretty good job of it. You know, it could definitely do the job for this room and this is a decent sized room. Might have to do a couple pops, but you know, it would do the job for sure. So now let's take a look at full power on the AD200 Pro. All right, so now I have the AD200 Pro here, also on full power. I'm gonna stand in the same spot and shoot off a photo. All right, so here you see the AD200 Pro shot here on full power. Now let's scroll back and see the speed light shot. So that's the speed light. That's the AD200. Again, that's the speed light at full power. And that's the AD200 at full power. So it's not a humongous difference as you see here. I mean, obviously the AD200 Pro is more powerful. It's lighting up the room more, a decent amount more but it's not a huge, huge difference. The spread is just a lot better. You know, you can see how much better the spread is. Like I could probably get away with one AD200 flash pop in this room. That would probably be good enough for this whole room almost. Whereas with the speed light, I would definitely need to do at least two, I would say. So, you know, it just, it's gonna make your job a little bit more efficient, a little less time consuming with a more powerful light. You could even go more powerful than the 200. Obviously there's a 300, 400, even 600. I find that AD200 is a sweet spot for most jobs. So that's the power difference between these two lights. So now let's actually shoot this room properly with the speed light and see what we can do. All right, so first I wanna get my ambient shot. So I'm just gonna bring this exposure back up to where I think my ambient shot would be, somewhere about there. So I'm gonna take this shot first. All right, so now we have our ambient shot. Now I'm gonna drop it down about two stops, which is six clicks on the shutter wheel. One, two, three, four, five, six. I might even cut the ambient a little bit more. One more, the seven, I'm gonna go seven on that. So here's where we're gonna be for our flash shots. I wanna turn my flash trigger back on and I'm gonna keep my speed light on full power here because I'm gonna need full power for this. All right, so for starters, I'm gonna go over here into this corner and do my first flash pop and then see where we're at. All right, there you see our first flash shot, which looks great, except that the, the back part of the room is still pretty dark, so I definitely wanna do another flash pop over there. So I'm gonna walk over there now and do a second flash pop. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so finally, I'm gonna get one over in this adjoining room that you can see a little bit of over here because we'll need one for that too. All right, so there we have our flash pop in the adjoining room. Now, I just wanna do my window pull if I wanted to do window pull here. Um, it's a horrible rainy day outside, but just for uh, demonstration. I'm just gonna get my exposure I want for my window somewhere around there's good. I like to take an ambient shot of that just for a backup safety shot, so i do that. Now I'll turn my flash back on. Now I'm just gonna point my flash at the window at an angle and get my window pull shot. All right, so we got all the shots we need for this room. Now let's take a look at the finished final image. All right, so this room that we just shot is the largest room in this whole house. So obviously if the speed light can handle this room, it can handle the rest of the house, no problem. Evidently, as you can see, a speed light will handle most situations for flambient real estate photography in average houses. This house is just, you know, your typical ranch house. The ceilings aren't very high. So there's no problems here whatsoever using a speed light. It's when you get into bigger houses with loftier ceilings, higher ceilings that then it's really gonna start being an issue. All right, so now let me take you to another house with a lofted ceiling situation to show you how a speed light may not be powerful enough for every situation and why you're probably gonna want a more powerful light in your arsenal if you're gonna be doing flambient real estate photography in the long run. All right, so here we are in a two-story foyer situation. Again, I'm just gonna quickly fire off both of these at full power just so you can see how a speed light would handle this sort of situation. All right, so again, I'm shooting through the monitor of my camera here so you can see what I'm shooting. Now, compositionally, I may not necessarily take a shot like this. It's sort of pulled back a little further than I would with the light switch and the sort of awkward wall there. I just wanted to show as much of this space as I could for this example, just so you can see what's going on here. Uh, so first, I'm gonna shoot the AD200 Pro on full power. But before I do that, I just wanna drop my exposure down a couple stops to get it to where I would be for a flash shot so I can cut some of this ambient light out. around there. All right, so now we're ready for this flash shot. Again, I'm gonna shoot the AD200 Pro here, full power, pointing straight up at this two-story foyer ceiling here. All right, so there's my flash shot with the AD200. So you can see it took care of all the ambient light, no problem, so it really did a nice job here. So let's try the speed light now on full power. All right, so again, I'm gonna stand behind the camera here in the same spot I did with the last one and just shoot this speed light directly at the ceiling, full power. All right, so here's our flash shot with the speed light. And here's the one with the AD200 Pro. So you can see the AD200 Pro's power becoming more apparent here in this situation with the two-story foyer. Here with the speed light, you can see it's not really taking care of all the ambient light. It's doing an okay job though. You could definitely get away with this here probably. So, you know, it's still pretty impressive for the speed light. But if this was say a two-story living room where the room is much wider, this foyer you can see is a pretty narrow space, so the bounce is pretty good because it's bouncing off you know, a more confined area. But if this was a two-story living room, say a bigger room that's two stories, then you know the speed light would really start getting lost. Even the AD200 Pro might even start to struggle a little bit, but it'll do uh, you know, a better job than the speed light for sure. All right guys, so I hope this video gave you a good idea of what a speed light is capable of for flambient real estate photography. It does a pretty good job in most situations, but when you start getting into bigger spaces, it starts losing its potency and its ability to eliminate the ambient light. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you again soon on the next one.